All right, Salim Raziah here, and I thought I would just give you six pearls to not F up the arm if you're using peripheral vasopressors. So if we look at the safety of peripheral pressors in terms of how often do extravasation events occur, if you read through the literature, which I have to say is not really robust, but there is literature out there, it's anywhere from three to 6%. So three to 6% of the time when we do peripheral vasopressors, there can be an extravasation event. There's an even smaller percentage of people that will have necrosis uh, of their limbs, which is the basically feared complication of doing this. Now, not all pressors are created equal. Some are going to have more vasoconstrictive properties and therefore more likely to cause issues if it should extravasate. And the final thing is, is that in the past, we would either do midlines, pick lines, or central lines before starting this medication. But in the middle of a resuscitation for a short period of time, sometimes we need to have a bridge till we have time to do the procedure and do the procedure well and safely. And so maybe a better strategy would be give the needed medication through a peripheral IV, but not just any peripheral IV. So pearl number one. You wanna use proximal veins, but it's not just about proximal veins. It's also what is gonna have the largest diameter, but also be the most superficial. So for example, if you look at this arm on the left-hand side, you can see that the veins in general are going to be smaller, but they will be more superficial than the deeper veins, which are gonna have a larger diameter. And the reason I harp on more proximal and superficial if you can get both, that's great, but I personally would prefer the more proximal IV is because of this. So here are two veins, one is distal and one is proximal. And as you go to insert your needle, smaller veins are gonna be more likely to get punched through the back wall. And so having a larger diameter is gonna reduce the chances of that, which therefore reduces the chance of extravasation. Pearl number two, you want to use longer catheters. Now, one thing I didn't say in the first pearl is I kind of had these two veins sitting right next to each other. But the reality is, is that there's going to be some sub -Q tissue that you're going to have to traverse. And obviously, in more distal veins, there's going to be less sub -Q tissue to traverse. But in more proximal veins, there's going to be more. And therefore, you're going to need a longer catheter. So... Here's a short catheter and a longer catheter, and you can see that the shorter catheter just isn't gonna quite get there when you're looking for more proximal veins. Here's the same thing in longitudinal view, and you can see you're just not gonna get to where you need to be. And if you don't get enough catheter in the vein, again, it can come out and therefore cause more extravasation. So there's all different sizes of catheters. Um, the most common that is used for peripheral IVs is the 1.16 inch. Um, we have actually ordered a bunch of the 1.88 inch and that's actually what I use if I'm gonna start doing peripheral vasopressors. Again, the thought is, is I wanna get as much catheter in the vein so there's less chance of it coming out um, and extravasating. And then there's these ultra long catheters. The third pearl is you wanna limit the time that you're running the vasopressor through a peripheral IV. Now, all different kinds of people have different protocols. They've looked at evidence. Some people will go out to 24 hours, but my thought on this subject is the longer you run something through a peripheral IV, the longer and more of a chance that you're gonna have extravasation. And when you look at a lot of the systematic reviews, the majority of extravasation events occur after four hours. Now, two to four hours should be more than enough time to decide either A, the patient's getting better and they don't need the vasopressor, or B, the patient's not improving and they're gonna need the vasopressor for a longer period of time, which will give you the time to do your central line, your midline, or your pick line so that you can transition the vasopressor from the peripheral IV over to something that is more durable. Pearl number four is kind of confusing, but it's important. You wanna use as dilute a solution and as small a volume as possible. So the reason for dilution is that if you should have extravasation, if it's diluted, then you'll get less vasoconstriction and therefore less ischemia. And the less volume is because volume can cause pressure, um, which can further increase ischemia. 
So you want to do both. So let's talk about norepinephrine, which is one of the most commonly used vasopressors. It comes in four milligrams, eight milligrams, and 16 milligrams. And then in terms of volume, it comes in 250, 500, and 1,000 mLs. So if I was gonna use that pearl that I just told you, I would do four milligrams in 250 mLs. This is the equivalent of 16 micrograms per mL. It's dilute and it's a small volume. Now, if you're doing peripheral vasopressors, these last two pearls are crucial. You need to have an observation protocol. And so it doesn't have to be anything fancy. This isn't connect the vasopressor and walk away. It can be as simple as somebody just needs to check on the IV site every 15 to 30 minutes to make sure that if there are any signs of extravasation, you can stop the infusion, okay? Now, the sixth pearl is that if you're doing this, you should probably have an extravasation protocol in place at your shop. The way I would go about doing this is number one is if you have an extravasation event, take your vasopressor and switch it over to another site, but don't take the catheter out leave the catheter in. The next thing would be is try and suck out as much of the medication that has extravasated. Again, if you can get volume off and you can get vasopressor out, it's gonna be beneficial. Now after that, there are two options that you can use for medications. The first is fentolamine and the second is terbutaline. Everyone will have something different, but if you look at the screen, I basically have the formula for how you do this. So fentolamine comes in five milligrams per ml. So if you take times two and you mix that in eight mLs of normal saline, you now have a 10 ml solution. Five mLs goes through the catheter and five mLs goes around the catheter site. For terbutaline, it's one milligram per ml and all you need is times one and nine mLs of normal saline. Again, 10 mLs, five mLs through the catheter and five mLs subcutaneously around the extravasation site. Other options, you can try nitro paste. Uh, that's a vasodilatory medication, certainly can help. It won't hurt to try it. And then you can do elevation and warmth. Now be careful with the warmth because you don't wanna burn the skin and make an already bad situation even worse, but certainly it will also help with vasodilation. So six pearls to not F up the arm if you're doing peripheral vasopressors. Proximal veins because they're bigger, but go for the most superficial that you can. Use longer catheters because the more catheter you have in the vein, the less likely you're going to have extravasation. Personally, in my opinion, I would not run for more than two to four hours. If you're requiring more than that, it's time to transition to a central line, midline, or pick line. As dilute a volume and as small a volume as possible. So for norepinephrine, that would be four milligrams and 250 mLs. You definitely have to have an observation protocol. It can be something as simple as look at the IV site every 15 to 30 minutes to make sure that you catch extravasation events early. And then finally, if you're doing this practice, you should have an extravasation protocol, a step one, step two, step three that you follow. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you find that helpful. Love to hear your comments and thoughts on this.